Before going in depth to microservices, you definitely need to understand some things about Monolith. Or maybe you guys are already using Monolith and don't even know about it. Let's understand about Monolith and definitely um, it helps you to figure out whether your application was supposed to be built using microservice or not. How do you know your application is supposed to be built using microservices? You will know only when you know the pros and cons of Monolith. Then you will be in a better position to decide whether you will be building using microservices or not. So what is exactly monolith? Monolith means a big rock. But in software, it's basically one application which basically have every services packed in it. As I mentioned, let's take e-commerce as an example and see what exactly monolith e-commerce looks like. So this is how it looks. It has all of the different services which on e-commerce um, an application really needs. Say for example, it has product search, ratings and comments, user management, payment and billing, shipping, tracking, merchant operations and notification all built into one big application, right? Is this good? Let's understand what is the advantage of having this, your application structured this way um, or, and what are the disadvantages of it? So let's understand what are the advantages of monolith architecture. I showed you in the previous, um, I, I showed you previously that what are the different modules we need in our e-commerce application. Now, what are the advantages? It's all simple, you know, simple to deploy, simple to develop, simple to scale. So when you, for the first time in your building your e-commerce application, what you do is you basically create an application and every developer start creating their own modules in the same application and start committing and pushing. And then all you need to do is package it and then deploy it on one of the you know, servers or virtual machines or EC2, wherever. And then you configure the load balancer and done. It's up and running. Now, how it works is basically like, like say for example, you can put all of your, uh, you know, say think, think, think this as an application package. You put it on your uh, you know, server and then it's running. You basically can start serving requests. Now it's very simple because all of this package, um, the, the project is in one package. You just need to deploy and start this package. Basically you have all of these modules and services available in this one server, right? Say you want to search, this server itself takes care of searching, products catalog, payment, adding to cart, you know, merchant service, shipping and package, everything. Now, as and when the users are increasing, definitely you will need to scale. That is simple to scale as well. Like how you're gonna add one more server, consider it as server one, and this is server two, and you copy the same package, basically you have somewhere in the repository, um, and you copy it here and start the server and start distributing the you know, requests. Now, what we have to do, definitely you will have to configure a load balancer now because you have one or more servers. So you have load balancer, now the request and responses will be distributed based on round robin or any other different load balance technique. Now, if you want to scale even more, keep adding servers, it scales. Now, it is simple to deploy, simple to scale and simple to develop as because we have only one repository and all the developers are working on it, right? But it gets complex when you start getting more and more uh, you know, customers. Now it's okay if you have, you know, 1,000 requests per second or 1,000 users or 10,000 users, maybe 50,000 users, it's still fine to have monolithic architecture. But what happens when you have, you know, millions of users, then this architecture style will get complicated. Now let's understand what are the problems or cons of having monolithic architecture or building an application using monolithic architecture. Now, the first one is technology dependency. Say, for example, if I start uh, my e-commerce application using Python, Django, for example, and build all of the modules around Django, then the problem is in near future, maybe when the scale is high, when, when I have more applications on my system, now I'm thinking, okay, maybe the notification service would have been built using Node.js or Go. Uh, because that's the better approach or there is a better library available in some other language uh, or some company is giving capabilities to use their APIs using Node.js or Go or any other Rust, for example. Now, I can't really use those capabilities because 
my whole of the application is using is built using um, Django and uh, Python, right? That's kind of problem because we are stuck to the same technology and everything should be implemented using Python if it wants to be in the same project or application. And that's like, once you start, there is no end. It keeps on growing until you basically scrap the project and rebuild it or basically break it into pieces like service oriented architecture or microservices, right? So that's like a long-term contract, sorry, long-term dependency on a same technology. That's definitely is not going to work out. Now, the next thing is engineering focus. Now, I want to build a dedicated team which basically focuses on order management. I can't just isolate them and then tell them to keep working or focus on you know, order management or making uh, the order processing or management better because they, have to be in the same team, understand all of the code which we are building in an application which is tightly coupled between all of these modules. It's very difficult, right? Uh, from the engineering, um, you know, or, or, you know, managing the team perspective. So that's, that's like, this is one problem. And the next thing is scaling also is kind of problem. As I mentioned, we can easily scale the virtual machines, but the problem is as we have more and more virtual machines, everyone is basically talking to the same database. Uh, because say, as I mentioned, so there are like, so virtual machine one, two, three, four. So you have hundreds. Now everything is basically talking to one database, right? Everyone, every virtual machine is talking to the same database, even though you have load balancer, it's basically distributing the traffic over here every virtual machines or containers are talking to the same database. Now, for example, if we are using RDBMS or in any relational database, now the transactions and the requests are problem because since we have hundreds of virtual machines or containers, everyone is basically writing and reading a lot of data and this database might suffer because all of the data, first of all, all the data related to our e-commerce is in one database. It's good, you can join, do joins and everything. But the database will definitely suffer. We can't really scale out uh, this database. That's like one more problem. And the next one is uh, overloaded VM and containers. Say, if I want to deploy my application uh, quickly, I want to scale out. Now, the problem is since every module is contained in one single application, the size of the application might be in, term, you know, in terms of GBs. Now, copying uh, that uh, you know, one or two GB application uh, package to the virtual machine definitely will take time and also you know starting up might take time and all of this problem uh, it can't we can't just immediately you know spin out one more virtual machine or container and scale out easily that definitely is going to take time i mean i have read some blogs in which they mentioned some of the applications used to take more than 10 to 15 minutes just to start um, serving the request that's definitely a problem when you have when you have to scale out immediately when you see a spike yeah, when you have configured auto load you know uh, load balancing or auto scale features that's definitely is going to suck so the next thing is um, you know ci cd problems when you have a continuous delivery and integration setup uh, in your development pipeline the tests will definitely become a pain point because you have to run all of the tests which belongs to all of the whole application itself it might take num, you know, many number of hours just to run the test itself because it's tightly, tightly coupled. You can't just run tests only for your module. And the next thing is build. Build might also make, might take more time as it has to build the whole application. And also when you're pushing the code, uh, it, it, you might see a lot of conflicts because all of the developers in your team in which are working on the e-commerce application will basically keep on pushing code into the same repository, it could be a possibility that there is a lot of conflicts. And um, say, for example, you're onboarding new developers to your team, then understanding the code will become definitely a pain point because it's like one pile or a huge pile of code. Now, the new developer will be definitely lost in understanding all of this code. So how do we make all of these problems how do we take out all of these problems and make our e-commerce application better uh, in terms of, uh, you know, focusing the engineering perspective or handling the technology dependencies or making better CI/CD pipeline and making a scale out, you know, scaling out faster or all of this, right? How do we do it? I think the answer is definitely the microservice 
um, let's understand different concepts of microservices and how exactly microservice solves all of these kind of problems when we are building big you know web applications